one and all to the KOE Nation for a very special Chicken Coop Invasion Edition. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, the traveling man, your king of extreme Phil KOE, joined by some distinguished, indomitable broadcast partners. The one, the only, and the house get the house host of the evening. The styling, profiling, chicken. How you doing? Ah, folks, I'm rubbing off in the right ways. What can I say? Yes. And also <laughs> the blend master, Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. This is one that we did not expect to be getting to do tonight, but here we are. Woo, baby! I, Canadian blends. I literally found this yesterday. Like, just stumbled on it, and I was like, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're doing this. Uh, Caribou Crossing Single Barrel Canadian Whiskey. One of the few that I've ever really come across here, too. Yes, uh, let's Indeed. let's get this bad boy out. This pa It's packaged pretty, uh, pretty tightly. It seems to be reminiscent. well. It seems to be reminiscent the Blanton's box. Yes. Oh, yeah, funny about that. that. Why? Now, actually, strangely enough, Chicken, oh. funny that you mentioned that. It's kind of... It's got hmm. the Blanton's... Uh, well, this is a, it's a caribou, not a... <laughs> a lot of people call it an elk, but yeah. it's a... It says right there, caribou. <laughs> but it's got the wax in my, and even the pull tabs. Now, here's the, the real kicker. Single barrel Canadian whiskey... Right down here, it'll say on the bottom, imported by Sazerac Company. Hmm. That is the uh, owner of Buffalo Trace. Yep. So, and who well made, done. What, what does Buffalo Trace make? A few whiskeys that oh. a few people like, hmm. uh, like Sazerac Rye, Colonel E.H. Taylor, and Blanton's. Oh, Blanton's. So, oh. now, Tony, while I open this up here, would you please read the fine folks that's on the back of the box? I mean, I could. I finally got my glasses in. But yeah, nice, nice. All right, this is, uh, this is uh, again, this is Canadian, so I'll try to navigate their wording. It's, it's pretty foreign to me, so I'll, I'll try to get through this. Like French. Yeah. <laughs> like the long seasonal journeys taken each year by the majestic caribou herds of North America, this bottle of Caribou Crossing Single Barrel Canadian Whiskey has been on a journey of its own. Caribou Crossing Single Barrel has been painstakingly handcrafted by our expert whiskey-making team, which has selected the finest whiskey available. The whiskey has been patiently aged in open for many years, let me say how many, to give it a rich and complex yet smooth flavor. I don't know if it's Canadian. Each barrel is then bottled individually with expert care and skill under rigorous quality standards. A new Canadian whiskey as bold and as venturous as the great caribou who roam the wild. Caribou Crossing is Canadian whiskey unequaled by any other. So, this can be some smooth shit. That's at least what it says yes. on the box. Now let's let's hear how the pork pop goes. Oh, Ooh, that's that sexy. Was, that was five star. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I'll let you guys play with the cork because I know you want. It's to. heavy. Yeah. It's really. Oh heavy. wow, that was way heavier than it I, looks for sure. Yeah, for sure. Interesting. Excellent. So beautiful. All right, and uh, I'll just real quick read what's on the back of the bottle here. Uh, Caribou Crossing Single Barrel is painstakingly handcrafted by our expert whiskey making team who have personally selected the finest whiskey available. I was about to put it right back here. Wow, oh, okay. The result is Canadian whiskey unique, unequaled by any other. Yeah, you, you just heard. Yeah, um, they, yeah, they put it on there twice. Just to drive it. It's available in limited quantities at select stores. So. Yeah, and somehow. Where'd you find this at? Lincoln, Nebraska, yeah, and Straight Liquor. So yeah, I stumbled enough. on two of them. Yeah, this. Yeah, Baffled. I'm the still folks baffled. there didn't even seem to know what they had, so yeah. that's probably the only reason it's not gone. They didn't post it on Facebook. True. So there we go, folks. Now you can see the beautiful bottle, the beautiful box, and all of its glory. But now, guys... I'm worried about the beautiful whiskey. I was about to say, it's time to consider the whiskey. Now, folks, I know this is what you've been waiting for. Let's get to the nosing. Oh, wow. That doesn't come across as a Canadian at all. Mm -mm. More bourbony, uh, I guess, yeah, like caramel. Caramel for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was gonna say like caramel Canadian. Well, That's kind of what I'm getting. It's the oak casking for sure, but almost like a caramelized oak to me. A really, a really nice nose. 
Usually not that complex. For the I figured it was going to be when we got to the bourbon, Canada. so we'd be getting this right. kind of nose in it. Yeah. All right. I so almost wonder if they're using X bourbon cast. It's got a really nice look, and it does. Let's see, but it does stick to the glass. Oh, yeah. It's. Bit. Yeah. Now, Canadian oak is actually a different animal from American white oak, so I don't know if they're using Canadian oak or if it really says what kind of oak. Because this is just smacking me of ex bourbon milk. Just says aged in oak. So it could be either. Yeah, it really could. But let us know in the comments if you happen to know. But this is creamy. Yeah, it does. Excellent, excellent nose. Now, gentlemen. It smells very smooth. Or pleasant. We're going to grade this whiskey on a few different scales when we get to it. We're going to grade it as a Canadian whiskey. Okay. We're going to grade it as a whiskey. Sure. We're going to grade it as a cask age spirit. Of course. Then there's going to be a secret grading. Your shelving. And then the secret question. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of secrets yeah, here, folks. I didn't folks. know we were doing a pop quiz. I know, right. I know. So, but hey, when you come here to the KOE Nation, you get the full grading. You know exactly, you know you've had the most comprehensive review possible. So, folks, I think it's time. Uh, it is time. Gentlemen, cheers. Been a long time coming. Mm. Crisp. Very light. A lot more Canadian. That comes through, but... Like a caramel and like almost like a soda. Yeah, okay. Like a bubbly soda on the back of I your... I say, it's, it's got a spice. It's very light, but yeah, like a soda spice. Like I've got to say, it's more like like you're drinking a Barks Root beer or something like that. Like that's got a hint of butter, too. Like yeah, that's... yeah, that, the consistency. <clears throat> yeah. That, yeah, that's kind of where that wow. creaminess in the nose comes from. Yeah, the through. back end does have that creamy butter. Yeah, it's not... Oily, it's not right, um, right. It's not like it's, roast butter, it's not but, viscous, yeah. it's butter. Like, that's the best way to put it. Wow, wow, okay. Mm. Now, this it's is it's pretty smooth. I, I really like this. This is only 40% mm. ABV, 80 proof. So, of course, it's very light. It, it does, it it's got a little kick. A little yeah, bit. yeah, it'll play with your tongue. No, uh, no, no better way to say that you're sucking at your job, T. Right. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't want to say it out loud, but, you know, if we're going to get there. <laughs> is what it is, T. Honesty at the chicken coop. Because right. I know it's be true. It's got the Canadian smoothness, but they found a way to really remind you that you're drinking a, a single barrel whiskey here. This is... I don't want to say it's exactly what I expected because it's not, but at the same time, it's familiar to what I expected. Because there's a very fascinating part of Canadian law that in order to call it Canadian whiskey, and I don't know how they measure it, it has to with stand up to the smoothness, character, and reputation of Canadian whiskey. Hmm. I have no idea how you go about doing that, but that, I'm I think... guessing it includes a lot of politeness. Hey. Probably. Hey. <laughs> and this one... Like, on the nose, not so much, but on the palate, it is quintessentially Canadian oh, yeah. yes. with just a little added sweetness to it. So, all right, guys, yep. let's get right into the grading. We're right. going to start off with as a Canadian whiskey, and for those who don't know, we are going to grade on a five-star scale. Half a star means you can just leave it behind. Uh, Three-quarter of a star, eh. If you get up to four stars, four and a half stars, five stars, that means you need to have a dram of this before you shuffle off this mortal coil. So, as a Canadian whiskey on a five-star scale, we are going to let the master of the chicken coop go first. I'm kicking it. I, I really enjoyed this. This is good. I, I need to go hunt some of this down. I'm going to give it four and a quarter right off the bat. I kind of want to give it higher, but... Yeah, no, four and a quarter, I think, is more than fair, and I don't think it's too generous. This is good. Tony G? As a Canadian, actually, I don't think you're being generous enough. I'm going to give it 4.75 as a Canadian. Because, nice. Uh, yeah, usually Canadian is just, it's, it's overly smooth. And again, this is only 80 proof. There's no flavor. In it. Yeah, so at yeah. 80 proof, you don't get a lot of complexity. There's enough here at 80 proof that I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised. So wait, wait, wait. Is Heaven Hill a Canadian distillery? 
No, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, no, sorry. That's good. Mm. <laughs> step little your, singer. Step it up, Heaven Hill. Mm. Oh, little gotcha. <laughs> um, I'm going to agree with Tony here. This is 475 is a Canadian whiskey. Yeah. Because, again, it's not as crowded of a playing field as, say, the Scotch World, right. Irish well, whiskey. You can go like, into any grocery store in America, and your liquor section is going to be riddled with cheap Canadian whiskeys. Your Black Velvet, your Canadian Springs, your... I don't... Windsor. Know. Yeah, yeah, Windsor, stuff like that. Yeah. Seagram's. And it's all going to be like 10 bucks for a handle of whiskey. So that's the kind of stuff that you're getting that's really, really smooth. It's really, really cheap, but there's nothing going on there. This has some profile to it, and it has some complexities, and it really is probably one of the better in-depth Canadian, Canadian whiskeys yes. that there is <laughs> that I've ever had, for sure. And it's a single barrel, which I this is lot. the first time know, I've right? ever even seen yeah. a single barrel Canadian whiskey. They cornered so. the market. Well, yeah, so... Because a single barrel Canadian five stop, but no. Um, now we move on to getting a little bit wider world of sports. As a whiskey, this is now putting it up against all the bourbons, the scotches, Japanese whiskeys, Irish whiskeys, other Canadian whiskeys. How would you grade this one? I'm gonna go three and a quarter because it's only eighty proof. And it's very familiar. The The profile is familiar. It's sweet. It's got a little bit of spice. It's got some butter in it. I love all that stuff. But again, it's... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blend with this. I'm not gonna mix this. I'm, I'm gonna drink it like this. I would not put water or ice in this because it would just dilute it too far. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's really good, but as a whiskey itself, I, I think that's fair. I, I don't think Tony's too far off there. Uh, definitely not mixing. This is something that I'd be sitting on the dog and chicken show, chatting with you fine gentlemen, and drinking straight out of one of these uh, yeah, just like this. beautiful little glasses here. Um, yeah, but it's, it, it, I think you're both right. The competition of, of your options at that point are are pretty substantial. So I, I, I'd give it a three, three and a half um, with That's that. Fair. I'm going to disagree with both of you. And I'm going to give this as a whiskey 375. Wow, okay. Um, okay. Now, uh, you're saying never cocktail. This would go amazing in a whiskey Presbyterian, in a whiskey fix, maybe even a Manhattan. If this was so, as readily available as Crown Royal, then yeah. But other yes. than that, no, I'm putting this in a Glen Cairn just like we're doing right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it really excels there. But I'm just saying, like, folks, now, most folks, when they get whiskey, they're just looking to mix it with cola. But yeah. uh, this right. one... I yeah, would put it that. in, if you're going to mix it, put it in something more complicated. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so <laughs> now we move on to cask-aged spirits. Now this is going up against even your rums, reposado tequilas, uh, cognacs. Uh, uh, it's a single barrel. It's got a really nice profile. It's inviting. It's not something that's going to run anybody off. You're going to be able to sip this and not sip too much and get wasted like with some of the higher proof stuff so I, I really like it I'm going to give it 3.75 I'm probably going to stay with three and a half on this one um, for as much as you have to chase this down if it's that rare sure. and then what you get kind of I don't know I, I, I yeah I could see that maybe if they had a cask strength version of this to go alongside it I don't know if that stuff maybe it'll also work my, this did cost me 59 dollars so, so the price isn't that bad. So yeah. even out. I'll stick with three and a half, and, and that might be a little on the low end. No, but. that's fair. Well, not as low as I'm going to go. Oh. As a cask-aged spirit, it's single barrel. It's excellent stuff, but that's a very wide world of sports. I'm going to give that three stars as a cask okay. aged. Now, okay. as the secret grading scale, on a five-star scale, as a marketing gimmick... How do you grade Caribou Crossing? Five and a half. <laughs> I can't begrudge a single sentence he said there. As soon as I saw it online, I had to have it, and here it is, and yeah. Uh, it, yeah, I, five and a half. Uh, so I'll go. I'll go four and a half. Okay. Because uh, yeah. Um, Especially for for your, a lot of people are Crown Royal Canadian whiskey drinkers already, and then when you start talking something like this, it's it's a unicorn out yeah. there, and then you happen to see it. If now that you've watched this video, you you hear some of these reviews. If you see this in a store, you're gonna be like, shit, I gotta get that. 
Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, in terms, like I said, my Canadian whiskey, I gave it 475. Just as cask age, there's a lot of stuff out there, but this still is better than half of it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's the way I'd put that. Um, in terms of a marketing gimmick, uh, marketing, uh, marketing campaign, I would say yeah, I gotta give it 475 because it copied the super successful Blantons in a way that actually could be copied, yep. and they utilized that that market pull. Yep. And so literally, there's like, oh, you're looking for Blantons. You can't find Blantons? Well, what do you know? Here's some Caribou Crossing that's here on the shelf. Yeah. You can still feel, you can pat yourself on the back, and you were the you were the good whiskey hunter that day. You that's can, what Phil's doing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, it, yes, I'm, Pat myself on the back a little bit. So now we move on to shelving. This is an interesting one, gentlemen. Do we put it on your top, your middle, or your bottom shelf? For me, I rearrange my shelf again to go back to Scotch, Irish, and bourbon and rye because I. Some of them I'm like, how can I justify putting this on the middle? I can't. But at the same time, can this go on the? So I'm kind of back to a arrangement of what goes together, and I don't exactly have a Canadian shelf, but for me, if I was just talking top, middle, bottom, it's easily a middle shelf. Now, mm-hmm. if you want to impress people with your array of just various whiskeys, this is a Canadian that you could easily put on the top shelf. So, in between there, middle for sure. Um, Don't totally disagree. I don't know if I'd put it on top. Um, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. It depends on what else I have, exactly. um, but but I don't know. For yeah, I th- I think if it were today, I bought it, it'd be on my top shelf. There you go. You know that is the thing is maybe in terms of whiskey, it's definitely a top to middle, uh, top to middle shelf. But in terms of its conversation piece mm-hmm. and the and aesthetics, imp- as the an cool impress lit- your cap. guest yeah. whiskey, it's kind of five stars. So. That's why. That's when somebody walks in and goes, oh, yeah, where'd you oh, find what, that? What is, or, and, what? and even if they don't know whiskey, it's like, what is that? Yeah, they they yeah. want to know. So I'm going to give this one a begrudging top shelf because it's, it is, if you're talking outside of bourbon or scotch, this would be a special occasion in Presser Yeah, 100%. Um, so that was shelving, and now. The secret question, folks. Those who are new to the show, there's a secret question, and you had to wait all the way until now to get there. When this bottle is empty, or if either of you happen to find this bottle, $59.99 US dollars as of this year of our Lord 2021. You see that on the shelves. Are you picking it up for your own collection? Yes. Are you letting it go? Absolutely. This is one like a, a Blanton's or a Booker's, in my opinion. It's just one that you you want on your shelf if you're a collector of any means. This is one that you're not going to see every day, especially in our neck of the woods. Got to grab it. Yep, and uh, for those wondering about me, there was two bottles on the shelf. Was. So, was. yeah, there was. Now, there's one bottle here, and there's one at my house. That's, and yeah, keep your eyes on this space, because there will be plenty more videos with this particular... Uh, Offering to be compared now. Before we go, Tony, chicken. Anything you'd like to say to the people? Yep. All right. Bottoms really up, damn folks. good. Not really disappointed good. at all. Nope. Was really, really like it. Excellent. Well, folks, as I'm known to say around here. All that being said, thank you for joining us for our review of Caribou Crossing in the Chicken Coop. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your King of Extreme, Phil KOE, signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partners. The Blend Master. Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe. Style and profile and chicken. We'll see you next time, folks. <laughs>